cookies and I tell stories about food all the time, as you probably know. So let's see who's up here is Hattie the bat. And that's my good friend, Elliot Kravitz, who is a porcupine. And then I've been doing a series on uh, that's available on YouTube. So this is a story about uh, caps for sale. And um, there's the Raven, great, wonderful folk tales. And oh, you may recognize him. People bring me Pinocchio puppets because I'm a puppeteer. And that's Charlie Chaplin, who I never met, but wouldn't that be cool if I did? Well, let's see, who do we have here? Oh yes, that's Bluma, appropriately named because she's blue. She has a set of cousins that I created that live in Atlanta, Georgia at the temple. And there's my favorite authoress, Shelley. Keir Robbins Nixon, whose book, poetry book, I use for her. Now, here is my puppet. She's exhausted because we just came back from Ogden, Utah, telling stories at a wonderful children's museum you ought to go see. And let's see who else. Oh, oh, this puppet fell asleep while I was out of town. So let's wake him up. Come on. Sorry, buddies. There he goes. There. Oh, he's still exhausted. Any of you exhausted? Why, that's a cat from Peter and the Wolf. And there's some stuff. Here's Strigonana's pot. Strigonana, I have not undone. Here's a great story. I'm going to come to Milwaukee and tell you someday. And that is Joseph the Dancing Man. And here's a whole bunch of string along puppets that I use. One from Mexico. And let's peek back here and see who's hiding on me. Oh, yeah. That's Babar. Anybody out there know Babar the elephant and a bunch of his books? That's an elephant that I bought when I was eight with money I saved. Oh, and that's something I've never been in. Ah, anybody recognize that letter? Or two letters if you take out the dot in the middle. Uh -huh. I have the entire elf, olive bait somewhere around. Let's see who's down here. There's a wolf. Every storyteller needs a wolf, right? Because they are always in the stories. You can make a wolf out of your hand like that. Down here, here's some puppet that was used in a wonderful story that we was written by friends of mine to help kids figure out the worries and the fears of the pandemic. And she does, she even has her, her own mask. And I see that you guys are wearing them. Just like Kiki, her name is Kiki. She's cool. And then I have puppets from other countries and some collector puppets. And that's my grandma. Well, she's not really my grandma, but a grandma too is a string puppet. She's waving. Hey, grandma, put your hand on your lap. Nice job. Thank you. She looks tired, doesn't she? So uh, let's see who you might know. You might know Pumpkin, and that's my rock band. And there's Max. Max is made out of an oatmeal box. You can all make a Max sometime. And of course, Max's best friends, the monsters, the book, one that, that great book, The Wild Things by Maurice Sendak. And let's see, who else can I meet too? Oh, there's my little boy who plays softball, baseball. You ought to meet him. And then um, I'm really big on boxes, as you could probably tell. And that's one of the foods that I like to eat. And I put my face on it. And that made it a puppet. And that's, of course, had to be one of my grandkids. Now, I'm going to introduce you to a gentleman I had the privilege of meeting. And uh, that is Frank Oz, uh, also a Jewish puppeteer. And if you don't recognize his puppet, that's Animal. And he runs, works Animal. He also runs Miss Piggy. Um, and for those of you Star Wars lover, he also manipulated and helped design Yoda. And who would love that? So what else? And now, for those of you who actually watched um, the Cartoon Network, this is some of the characters that were given to me by my, my little guy, my little boy, Matt, worked on the regular show. And these were the cartoonists made me these very simple puppets that I may have actually come and made with you guys. So of course, there is my tribute to Jim Henson. And then there's some work that needs to be done in my studio, including finishing and fixing. And this is the great deal of stuff I have all over. And let me see, anybody else want to get introduced? And of course, because you love them and I love them too, these are books, these are storybooks that I use 
all the time. So sometimes I have a chair in here. I'll just come in, pick up a book, and tell stories. Find a new one to put in my collection of stories that I tell. So we're going to settle me down here. Oops. And uh, start by telling you a story. I'm going to flip the camera around and see if I can find me. Ta-da! Thanks for coming. That's where I live and do all my work. Actually, I don't live in the studio. I live in the door out there in, the, in my house. So the subject matter today is Mishpacha family. Uh, and interesting, I always used to get the word mishpuka and mishpitim, which are rules, kind of mixed up. And I kind of think they are in a, a variety of different ways, not officially. And maybe sometimes the things that are in my head are not official as well. So I got a couple of stories. And today, wonderfully enough, is Mother's Day. And um, there isn't another holy day except Father's Day. And not the other ones that are have a parents feel like they ought to have their own day too but tell you the truth i'm just as good as that. so i'm going to tell you my first and most favorite family story it's a little bit oh yeah that's I'll just pick it up so it's an old and you know what i may have even come and told you to your to you but but before we start, I've introduced you to puppets of all different kinds, but now I'd like to wake you up in the morning because that is how I start my day. So what I'd like you to do is to pick one of these up and to put it on top of your bed. And one of these day by doing a little um, puppet aerobics, I suppose the more classy would be to say puppet yoga, but I think puppet aerobics sounds better. And I'm hoping that you remember the last time we did it. And if you don't, you won't forget it. All right, here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Wake your puppets up. Stretch to the sky. Shake it out. Looks good. First exercise is called puppet push-ups. I can't be participating, so I'm going to pretend that you are. Oh, I see. Okay, stand those puppets up, touch them. Nice, really good. Now put those puppets on their back, take a deep puppet breath. We're gonna do 10 sit-ups. You count, any language will do, go. Two, three, four, I gotcha, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, X. Great. Jumping jacks and jail, all right. Once you've gotten it all shaken out, and we need to do that because I saw you move on before, we're going to roll overs. Ready? Go. Hi. Hello. Pat yourself on the back. The other back. Good job. All right. Now, let me tell you a little bit about puppets. You've seen some. Puppets are pretty amazing, and they were used originally for religious experiences and always for adults. Puppets didn't actually begin to roll over into the world of educational entertainment for uh, we kids until probably the strongest example would be Henson. Um, and the very first puppet show was actually by one of my mentors named Boyd Tilstrom in Chicago. And he was awesome. And he just started to do a TV show in the 50s. It was called Kukla, Fran, and Ali. But Fran, not a puppet. A person and she was actually the star she would sit in front of the stage and she would encourage audience, even on tv like us to participate but like the middleman that was the days of puppets by punchers now the puppets that that i love the most are not string or shadow or rock puppets but hand puppets so what i'm going to do is show you how a hand puppet works okay um good all right take this thing here that's called your thumb then we're going to divide by two here excellent now what do we have here what does that look like oh you say it looks like the priestly blessing yep 
That's what it not only looks like, but that is what we are told it is. So how did that get started? Oh, it got started by this guy. In, it was, of course, started in, in Torah, but brought to the attention of the participating TV by a guy named Gene Roddenberry and Leonard Nimoy in a TV show called um, and Prosper. So that's how I hold my puppets. So I get, who should I get? Oh, yeah. I'm going to get one of these dudes. You know how it works. So if you have a puppet, and I hope you will, someday I'll come and make some with you. What you do is you take your hand and you put it inside. Okay. Excuse me. Got to turn around. Okay. This is a story. He's going to be used in a story because he is one of the principal characters. Puppet do. Mm -hmm. Sure. Pretty much anything that your mind wants him to do except cross his legs. So I'm going to make him do a few things so you'll understand how he works. It's not particularly difficult except for this puppet who seems to want to sleep. Mm -hmm. So what first thing we would be doing mm -hmm, is very cooperative, see? And then crawl out of bed. I don't know how you crawl out of bed, but this puppet crawls out of bed this way, being careful not to. Oops, sorry, buddy. Fall to the ground. There it goes. Okay. He's fine. He's fine. You're fine. Okay. All right. So what can we do? He's going to, if if you have the opportunity to, you could even stand if it's okay with your teachers, and you could do it. Yes. Okay. This is kind of like puppet says. So you can wave one hand. You can wave the other. You can nod yes. You can turn your fingers and say no in your head, but you can also say no too, okay? So he's done a magnificent job. I'm gonna pat him under the back of that. And then when he's all done, just like any other participating performer, audience too, I always like my audience to bow, he would do one of these. And he is a part of my puppet mishpucha, my puppet family. You see, I have a lot and a lot of them are in bags and boxes Altogether, my mishpucha is about, that's a lot of family. But do they always get enough to eat? Can they tell a family story with me? Where's your brother? It's over there. Okay, I gotta go get him. You gonna get him for me? Oh. Let's think of his brother. Who knew? I didn't know they were that cooperative. Um, classic story, and parts of it come right out of the Torah. And it's repeated, actually, because in Deuteronomy, we repeat some of the rules, and this is one of those great rules. And because it's about family, and it's because it's about taking care of each other, I like to tell it all the time. So allow me to proceed. Once upon a time, there were two brothers who loved each other very much. They were to do that mother and their father and their grandparents and all who surrounded them. They were lived a long time ago in a little country called Israel. And what did they do to help take care of each other and the people who surrounded them? They learned how to take care of the fields. And in those fields, they grew wheat. And that's how their days began, they were taught by the mother and the father how to take care of the land and always to take care of each other. When they were taking care of the land, they learned this. People in the surrounding area often didn't have as much as they did. And so in order to help without embarrassing them, they would make sure that some of the grain was left in the corners of the field so that you and I, if we needed, didn't even have to ask and embarrass ourselves. It was called gleaning. And that is another way to take care of the neighboring mishpucha. So the two brothers learned not only to love each other, to care for each other, they also learned how to take care of neighbors in the field. And so that's how it was. When they grew up, they began to take care of the land by themselves. And the land was divided by their parents in this way. The brother who lived on this side of the land married and had three children. The brother on this side of the land never married and had no children. But 
They visited, they took care of each other, they took care of all of their neighbors and anyone who came by. And that's how they were trained. And life was good. Now, after a long day's work, the two brothers would go into their houses and fall asleep. It happened to be night. In the middle of the night, the brother who lived on this side of the land got up and worried about his poor brother. So much to do and no one to help him. So he snuck into his barn and took some of his stored grain, crossed over in the middle of the night and left it for his brother and then wasted it. Oh, being careful nothing. But the brother on this side of the land, no children and no wife woke up. He had the dream too. He worried that his brother had so many mouths to feed and he needed some extra grain. So he went into his storm, took some of his extra grain, crossed over in the middle of the dark night, fell sound asleep. But they both slept peacefully through the night knowing they had helped each other but never given away their secrets. Now, the next morning, when the two brothers woke up, went into their storms, they were <gasps> astonished. So much. They still had the same amount. So confused. That night, when they fell asleep, they did the same thing. Brother on this side of the land, <gasps> three children and one wife took some of his extra grain crust over in the middle of the dark night, left it for his brother, went home and were so Happy. But seconds later, the brother on this side of the land, oh, with no children and no wife, took some of his extra grain, crossed over in the middle of the dark night, left it for his brother, and then raced home. Now they slept through the night, knowing they had helped each other. They woke up in the middle of the next day and was said, oh, it's the same as the night before. And now I'm going to tell you the truth. They did that over and over and over and over again. Waking up in the middle of the night, crossing over, never seeing each other until finally one night, they woke up at exactly the same time. Brother on this side of the land, three children and one wife took some of his extra grain. Brother on this side of the land, no children, no wife started to cross over in the middle of the night so burdened down with their gifts of love, their gifts of caring, their gifts of, that they bumped in the middle of the night and dropped their grain. And then they woke up, stood up, stared at each other, <laughs> laughed with delight for they figured out what you and I already know. It was on that spot where they realized how much they loved each other and cared for each other, those two brothers, those Mishpacha, that they hugged with delight. Now it also turns out, or so we are told, that it was on that spot where they bumped, dropped their grain, that Solomon built the temple in the city of peace, the city of Yerushalayim. And that, of course, could be the truth. And it certainly makes a very good story. Bravo to the brothers for doing such a good job. Thank you very much. I'm going to give them a well-deserved rest and maybe a little grain. They can make challah for Shabbat. And that, because you know the blessings now, is all about it. Tomorrow, excuse me, it's not tomorrow. Today, today is Mother's Day. So I thought what would be fun for me, if you didn't mind, would be to tell you my mother's very favorite story. So I'm going to take, I hate to take down the sign, I put it over here because it's Miss Lee. Oh, well, let me just put it over there a little bit. I'm going to put the moon over here. And let's see, the story takes place in the sun. So I'm going to move the sun back. Sorry. When we went virtual, I had to do a whole lot of different things to my space. And uh, that's one of them. Let me tell you a story that was indeed my mother's favorite story. And whenever I do any programming, and she had the opportunity, and she always did, uh, she'd say, could you do this story? And the story I love to tell because it's fun. It does have participation part. And although I can't hear you, I can feel your vibrant energies. I'm going to tell it. I've told it before, of course. I'm going to tell it a little bit differently because as long as I'm going to tell it uh, for my mom, 
I'm going to play the part of the mom. And uh, I'm going to have a puppet that I made a long time ago play the part of me. So <clears throat> she is also a hand puppet. And uh, here she is. Love the shoes. Thank you. Okay, you have a voice. You know you can talk. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I like your shoes too. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so if you're ready, I'll tell you who wrote this story. It wasn't me. It was written by Cantor in uh, Indianapolis, Indiana, long, long time ago. And I loved it. So I said to him, can I tell your story? And he said, oh, that would be nice. So I like when they say that to me because that's important to me to be told. And uh, I tell it with a variety of different puppets. And the ones I brought along today, I have puppets that are, are from other stories. And I like to do that because puppets can be actors and they don't even need costumes. You just can always change their, she, see how intensely she's listening to me. This is so impressive. I mean, this is a Shema moment for her. She's listening to me. Ready? Okay, you want me to start? Hurry up, okay, sorry, okay. Once upon a time, there was a young girl who was visiting a nearby place and she had decided that she was going to go and sing a song to her mama because she was visiting her for mother's day and uh she helps me to tell her mom yes dear. i'm going to sing a song oh, I love when you sing me songs is it a song i know nope i'm gonna get me a new song a new song for me mm -hmm. you can sing it all day long well you better hurry up because even though today is shabbat Mother's Day is two days away, so it may take you that long to learn a song. No, 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 no. I'm going to learn it today, and I'll be home in time. Oh, that's good, because it's your job to sing the blessings, too. Okay, Mom, not to worry. And I know sometimes it's a lot of people. Not you have trouble remembering a song. You try to figure it out. Well, should I write it down? No, 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 no. You don't have to write it down. Find a way that you can listen good enough to remember the song. Okay, Mom. I'll see you later. Be careful. Mom, what? Can you drag me there? No, I can't drag you there. I'm getting ready for Shabbat. Well, how many? How about the bus? Uh huh. You let me take the bus by myself? Of course. You're a big girl. What are you, four? <laughs> no. So take the bus. Where can I get it? It's out there. I must stop. Yeah, yeah. See it? See it out there? Oh, yeah, there's the bus. Okay. See you later. Bye, Mom. Give me a kiss. Thanks. Okay. Now, she went out and looked for the bus. She had never been on a bus before. Never, never, never. But when the bus came by, the bus driver said, hey, hi, how are you doing? Hi, where are you going? I, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to uh, Milwaukee. Milwaukee, that's a long bus ride. But I'm a fast driver. So come on board. Wait, do you have money for fare? Mm-hmm, my mommy gave it for me. Yeah. Coming back? Oh, yeah, it's how much about. Okay, thank you so much. Get, get on board. Okay, here we go. And so she did. Now, the bus driver was very friendly. I know that because it's me. How do you do? And tell me what's your name. Oh, my name is Marilyn. Oh, hi, Marilyn. I'm the bus driver. Oh, hello, bus driver. Thank you. Um, where are you going? Milwaukee. Well, that's you know, a city of some size. Are you, are you going to visit a friend? No. No. Are you going to uh, the museum? No. You're going to the movies. No. Well, you better figure out where you're going because we're here. Oh, that was fast. And so little Marilyn went out to find someone to teach her a song for her mama. She looked everywhere. She looked to the left. She looked to the right. She looked up. She looked down. And then she heard some beautiful music. La, 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 Hey, 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 who are you? Oh, I'm Marilyn. Marilyn, how do you do, Marilyn? I'm Joseph. Joseph, it's good to meet you. I heard that you, I heard you singing. I love to sing, and I like to write songs for all my people. They are the key to my heart. Oh, that's great. Well, I'm trying to find a song for my mama that would also be appropriate for Shabbat. Ooh, a Shabbat. Mama song. Oh, that's a double word. Let me think, 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 think. Yeah, oh, wait. Did you bring something to write it down? No. Mama says I need to learn how to listen. 
So I'll remember it. That was a big, tall order from your mama. Is she tall? No, she's big enough. No, she's not. Oh, look, tall order, listening. All right, I think I have the perfect song. Oh, good. Are you ready? Are you ready? Sing the song. Sing the song. You repeat after me. Repeat after you. And not say another word until you get back. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Chitty bim, chitty bim, chitty bum, chitty bum. Chitty bim bum bim bum bim bum, chitty bim bum, chitty bim, chitty bim. Chitty bum, chitty bum, bum bim bum bim bum, chitty bim bum bim bum. Very 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 bim bum bum. Hi, chitty very very bim bum. Very very bim bum bum. Very very bum. Now, not to know except the song until you get back. Got it? Chitty bim. Looking for the. Come on, you played brown trip. You can just get right on. Better hurry. Bob's coming. All right, uh, let's see, your name was uh, Marilyn, right? Good, remember me, I'm the bus driver. Hmm. It's very odd, don't you think? She's not saying anything. I'll ask her a question. Okay, fasten your seatbelt, okay. So, oh, Marilyn, did you see anybody you know? Okay. You know, um, you think that you two and not talk to the bus driver? Come on, better say something. I'll have to make cherry bim. Cherry bum. Cherry bim bum bim bum bim bum. You're calling me a bum? You're gonna have to leave my bus. I'm gonna leave you off right here. <gasps> she walked, she's walking, she's walking, getting warm and warm and what we're gonna do. And then all of a sudden she, who should come running out but a young girl. Hi, 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 how are you? Uh, do I know you? Oh, yes, I do. Uh, you're Marilyn. You live right near me. Um, I, 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 my name's uh, Marilyn. Did you say something? Do you, you want to say something? What? I, I love jokes. You love jokes? Oh, she likes jokes. Here we go. Knock. Hmm, that's odd. Must have, must have been maybe a little harder than I'll, I'll try it again. Knock, knock. Chitty bum. Hmm, it's getting kind of silly here. Choo, who's there? You're supposed to say who's there. I say knock, knock. You say who's there. We'll try it again. Knock, knock. Chitty bim, bum, bim, bum, bim. Bim, bum, bim, bum, bim, bum. Chitty bim, bum. Oh, I gotta go back to mom. My mom, 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 some our neighbor. She's kind of weird today. She's saying things, what to do, what to do. Oh, I'm down running to anybody. And she was Hi. really well. And then she ran into the store, always telling stories. She said, oh, look at that. It was Marilyn, the next door, little Marilyn, little Marilyn, little Marilyn. I was looking up. And I saw you, and I said, what are you doing? Look like she's been for such a long ride. And are you home in time for Shabbat? Oh, that's so good. So where were you? Did you see anybody I know? Hear any good gossip? Tell, tell, tell. Should you been? What? I don't know her. Do you know someone named Cherry Bim? Cherry Bim. She a bum? Cherry Bim, bum, bim. Oh, I'm good, buddy. That poor little Marilyn has gone. Oh, just in telling stories. I can't wait to tell stories. I just, oh, poor Marilyn. What was she going to do? She had to hurry home before she... anybody else. And she was in luck. She walked in the door. And her mom was getting worried because Shabbat was almost there. She said, oh, oh, my dear. You came home. I'm so pleased. But look at you. Did you run? Uh, 
I'm so glad you got home in time. The sun was about to set and you're here for Shabbat. But weren't you going to go get a song? Oh, did you get one? You want to sing it? Did you remember? Did you listen carefully? Good. Will you sing and can I join in with you? What you, what you want to do? You start and I'll repeat. How's that? Okay. Have a seat. That's good. All right. I'm ready. When you're ready. Chitty bim. Oh. Chitty bim. Chitty bum. Oh. Chitty bum. Chitty bim bum bim bum bim. Chitty bim bum bim bum bim bum. Chitty bim. Chitty bim. Chitty bum. Chitty bim bim bum. Chitty bim bum bim bum bim bum. I chitty bitty bitty bim bum bum. I chitty bitty bitty bim bum bum. I chitty bitty bitty bim bum bum. Oh, chitty bitty bitty. Bum. Song for mom. Chitty bitty. Mom! Little Marilyn Puppet. Would you like to go down there? And... Yeah, we can wrap this up like a great big present. I have lots of stories that I tell that include my mom. That include my, my mishpocha. I tell stories about my brother, mostly true and most. I tell stories of my little people and my now grand people. They like to tell stories too. So I see a clock on the wall that we have a few minutes and I'm not sure how this would work out because it's easier if I were able to hear you and wrap my arms around you, even mentally speaking. So I would be delighted if someone had a question for me or could read me one of the blessings that you have written for your me. So I don't know. So ask either the rabbi or Susan okay. if they can figure this out for me. Five minutes on calendar. And go. Okay, let's see. Do we have any questions? Yes. We have a question of, do you only tell stories? See if I can see. Okay. okay. Do you only tell stories with your puppets? Do I only tell as, as to what? Sing them? I don't. Do you tell any stories without no, puppets? No, I tell them without them. So she does stories. Yes, I do. I do. Uh, matter of fact, some people, when I do that, because I'm, always telling stories with puppets, people think that there's a puppet in there somewhere. Yeah. They'll all of a sudden say, oh, I loved your puppets, even though there's been no puppets present. It's very odd. Okay. Uh, and sometimes you don't really need a puppet because your hand easily can become a character. Like you can see shadow shows. And what's happened with this medium is that it gives me somewhat more latitude, which means I have a little bit more of a range. And what I don't get is I don't get to see your wonderful faces. And so I'm going to wave to Don. Hi, Don. Okay. Oh, he waved back. See what I mean? Hi. Okay. We have another any, question. Uh, other questions? Do any yeah. of you? Hold on. We have another one. Oh, how many puppets do you have? And do you have a current favorite? Oh, that's really hard to say. Well, well over 300. Um, if I told you my favorites, the other ones would stand up and rebel, but there are only puppets I don't. I think lately, as I'm now out in the world, uh, I have found that Mrs. Goose, who you met earlier, who's about 35 years old in the second iteration of that puppet, is the most aggressive because she does things on her own. She has a honk. Um, so she has the most flexibility. I use her a lot. I like the hand puppets, but I'm going to tell you the truth. Uh, I broke this one, the one I use a lot, in December, and it's just beginning to get 
flexible enough to use them as I want to. So uh, I would like to thank you guys because every time I get to use them, I get stronger. So the, all of those, the ones that I use, the brothers and the, bit and the old woman, I don't know if you would recognize her. I haven't used her in a while. She's from Babar the Elephant series I did, the old one. So I love hand puppets and I'm getting back to them. So thanks for asking. I'll I'm use them some more. Getting better. Do we have time for another? another? Do we have, yes, one more question, yes. Ooh, do you have certain puppets for certain stories? I do, but most of my puppets can get used for other things. I'm looking, and I don't know if you saw it on my tour. I have a talking cactus. Is uh, I mean, in the rock band I use in a lot of stories that have music. My Babar puppets I only use for Babar when I tell those stories. And but like the cat from Peter and the Wolf, I use that. But I do have a Peter puppet from Peter and the Wolf that he's only used in the Peter series. And yeah, I use them. I mix and I match. And uh, sometimes I use different kinds of puppets in stories too. So I'll use a, a stick puppet and a rod puppet. And a, hand puppet and you know us they all have to work for me so yeah thank you thank Match. you and back then I, say say I have 300 I puppets they have this anymore so good questions yeah. and you didn't embarrass me in front of my puppets mm -hmm. well, we are so excited to be doing more so I will charge you with, with you would mm -hmm. charge us with what I interrupted you, Marilyn. You I would were like saying about telling a story today at some. It's okay. I'm to think telling a story to someone today. Okay. Anyone, and even because I practice by telling stories to myself. So if everyone heard that, uh, that was story. Story. Stories you explain who we. we You're being asked to tell a and, story to and someone else. how we think. And they tell a lot about us. So find yourself a story. Even if it's where you come from, tell a story about the sun, tell a story about the moon, tell a story about our people, tell a story about something you that. So if someone says to you when you go home, how was your day? Tell a story about it. The answer. It was okay, it was good. It's, it's a nice answer, but it doesn't tell anything about you. And they to you, and you say, how was your day? And they say, good. Ask another question. Say, what made it good? Or what made it not good? And then you will flesh out a story. And that is we, the people of the story. That's what we like to hear. So thank you for inviting me into your space. I would hope that in the very near future, I get to actually see that face. And thanks. We're gonna make it happen. Thank you so much, Marilyn. We're, and thank you, Don, once again. We are looking forward to making that happen real soon. Um, we, will be, we will definitely be having you come out here and we're looking forward to it next year. So thank you so much for making our Yom Mishpacha even more special. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yay! Ah, oh, thank you for bringing sunshine to us. That is such a cute puppet. Ah, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank all of you. May you all have a My great pleasure. Yom Mishpacha. Don't forget your stuff from us. Please remember to grab your stuff on your way out.